Yep, and that means he's here. What's up, everybody? This is the Shonen Speak Easy. It's LQ, and this will be a short episode. I have two guests here with me, if you'd like to introduce yourselves. Hello, my name is Xavier. I'm willing to sit here and meet with you guys tonight. It's always good to hear your thoughts and comments. Let me know. I bet. Greetings, it's Black Star Prism again. Hope everyone is doing well. Looking forward to a very great and insightful conversation. I don't have to treat it like a job interview. Damn, it's it's not that formal. But um, <laughs> to, uh, this episode is just a short one. I want to wish everybody a happy Black History Month and ask the question that I'm probably going to ask the co-host when we get a chance to talk to them too. One, is your job doing anything for Black History Month? Xavier, I'm going to start with you. Well, my job is not doing anything for Black History Month besides <laughs> working my ass to the deal. Sounds about, doesn't sound too far from what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. They're not doing anything for Black History Month. Just working and that's it. All right, BSP, what about you? Outside of, you know, you being a mus- musician and having a choice in that regard, at least. What about your day-to-day? Um, my company had an African-American artist or graphic designer, um, or I guess just member of the team. I forgot his actual position, but he had presented that he had a coloring book um, that he either made or collaborated with people on um, to represent Black History Month. Um, it rolled out. I think it's either rolling out next week or already rolled out, but that's pretty much what they did to showcase representation. And I think there's channels, you know, to celebrate Black History Month and maybe give some facts or share how they're celebrating it. Um, But yeah, that's that. That's actually more than what I was expecting. Also is the, did you get a look at the coloring book? I didn't at the time because I don't think it was ready yet Mm -hmm. whenever they announced it. Because I think, yeah, Black History Month started on Wednesday. So it was announced Tuesday. Uh, Ah. So yeah, they just got him out the way, didn't they? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it was because it was because it was our all, not at all hands, but. We have routine meetings for the whole HQ where they give updates and stuff. So it just happened to fall on on that Tuesday to let everyone know. Um, but yeah, I believe it's digital. So okay. they, may dis- they may be distributing it to different school districts um, for the kids to work on. That is more than what I expected. Did um Wait, so now that... Have they brought it up since, you know, that meeting? They, like, drop an email and be like, the book is here. The book is here. (laughs) They, not that I noticed, um, they might have put it in in an email that they sent to all the employees that just has general updates. So they may have put it in that. I didn't have a chance to read it, to read that newsletter, I guess you could say. But I would like to think that they would have put it in there, if anything. It sounds like their efforts are greater than your awareness. <laughs> <laughs> they they are. Um, honestly, I, I'm glad that they're doing it. But there's also other things that were going on in the job at this time. So the focus has been kind of shifted. But I am glad that they are doing something about it. And I could probably, mm-hmm. probably look it up real quick as you continue to ask me questions. Cool. So next question. Uh, Trent, you'll probably be more into answering this one since nothing is going on. What do you think your job should be doing or what they could do to better represent Black History Month, if you think they should do anything. Actually, let me ask that first. 
Do you think that your job should do anything for Black History Month? I think they should, and I think they should show more awareness of Black History Month, whether it's maybe any African-American people who ever been involved in trains or logistics itself. I feel like that maybe they could have probably, I don't know, got gave more awareness to us about these things within the job that we work in instead of just not mentioning it at all or just leaving it how it is or how we're working now. Yeah, good. That's actually a really good take on that. Um, and this isn't to put you on the spot. I promise it's not. Is there anything that you know in your field about you know, about how black people have impacted it throughout history? Honestly, I have not known anything about how, what did you say, how they impacted it within my job or within your black industry? History. Like how black history has impacted your industry? Oh, we, I haven't really noticed too much of how black history has impacted the industry, honestly, but there has, I understand there has been a lot of African Americans that have worked within the logistics companies that have probably gave us a a path or a way to be able to have a decent paying job or a decent job like we have today. Yo. That's and the thing is the reason why I asked is because it's not like when we go to work, like us as workers don't realize how much our jobs have been impacted by black history. And it's also really good that it has been. But it's just like it's it's little things like that that could make you feel more empowered in the workplace. Yeah. Like, for instance, I, I actually know a little smidget about how the black how black history has affected the train industry. And it's uh, yeah. Granville T. Woods. He is pretty much known as the Black Edison. Mm-hmm. And he had patents for railway devices. Um, one, I think one is like a steam boiler furnace. Yeah, he patented in 1884, and then the electromechanical break in 1887. Yeah, that would be cool to know at work and just be like part of the technology that you're using today was created by a black person, and we yeah. just want, we want to let you know that we stand with these people, that we stand with you in your history and how you've impacted this field, and we appreciate all of you. You know, of course, they're gonna say not just black people. I mean, but of course, yeah, like we appreciate all the diversity that is brought to this company because we understand how diversity has impacted the world. Yeah. Yeah. Now, unfortunately I said that before them, so they can't say it now unless they're going <laughs> to give me a shout out at your job. But, <laughs> I'll make sure they do. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you know, just something that simple. Yeah. Has, has a great impact on at least just the overall feeling of how it is to be in work. And I, I know, um, a lot of people don't know my the industry that I work in because I'm not gonna lie, I'm still learning the industry that I work in. Yeah. Um when it comes to my job, which is in data and like data management and data visualizations, stuff like that. Basically we help people with resources and data. Um something as simple as WB Du Bois having data visualizations in his work um, that was that was based around his studies on African American communities. Um, Catherine Johnson, if anybody, if that name is like, I think I heard that name before. You have. Hidden Figures. She's the lady that's behind the, the math behind the NASA, op, number, a whole bunch of NASA operations. And yeah. it's just, you know, when I see stuff like, when I see these people, especially in, uh, especially in our history, like just seeing, like, wow, I didn't know that they had anything to do with, you know, my industry at all. Like, there's even a man that published game theory. His name is David Blackwell. I still don't know what game theory is because I didn't go to school for data or computer sciences or anything. Yeah, but it's just cool to know that, like. There's black people that have had an impact. This is actually how cool his impact is. Um, David Blackwell has a connection 
to both Princeton University and UC Berkeley. Um, yeah. He actually was a <clears throat> he got he was a teacher at UC Berkeley. And he had a full he was granted full professorship there. And one of the first black people to get that type of honor. So yeah. the thing that's cool about it is the company that the people that founded the company I work for went to U went to Princeton, went to UC Berkeley. So it's just like that's really cool to know that that's like his legacy could have had that impact. Like the company I work for ain't that old. So they maybe have gotten taught by him at some point, you know? It's just really interesting to have that type of exposure. Now, my job is doing some stuff for it, and I'll ask each person what they could do, what they could do better. But I guess I'll start off by finishing my, my first part of my own question. Um, my job is actually making an effort to bring more awareness to the impact on our industry from black history. And the names that I brought up was through my research to help with that, help bring that forward through marketing and uh, let other people know how black history has impacted, has impacted our field. Yeah. And there's even a training that we're going to have on it, I think on next week. Yeah, it's next week. And they're encouraging everybody to attend to it, to educate about black history, be more mindful of black people. And, you know, like basically how, how we function in the workplace, making the, keeping things, they want to keep it light, but also make it educational. And I really like that effort being put forward, but there's still people there and it's everywhere. There's still people in corporate America that don't see the significance of recognizing and acknowledging black history. Yeah. yeah. And that's one of the low points, but I will talk about what they can do better after I circle back to BSP about his experience or what his job is doing. So if you have anything else to add or also want to add what they can do better, it's all on you, man. You go first. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, so updates. Um, so they did put it in our newsletter. Let's go. They mentioned his name and told, and told everyone that um, he's actually a product designer, but he was also an artist. So I think it's cool that they utilize his outside talents to do something for the company. So kudos to them for that. Um, they shared that he's been selling his digital art in 2019 to share his craft with others and to show his, cho show his children they can live out their passions and highlight heroes that look like them. So good for him. The quote that the artist in question used was, for me, Black history is all about preserving our stories and not letting others tell them for us. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So what he did was... Um, he created a custom coloring book featuring black heroes that have impacted education. And they did share a link to download a copy to print out. Um, and they just mentioned that they're excited to support his art and sharing the commission with all the employees and students. So, yeah. So, question, do you have permission to share that link outside of work? Um, I don't see why not. Okay. I was just going to ask because it would be great for anyone that's listening to be able to support as well. Yeah. I'll I'll listen I will, to okay. I will see how I can share this with you to share with the with the listeners. We. Oui. Yeah. There's a link. I just need to find a way to to be able to send it to you. Nice. So yeah, um, so that was those are my updates. Um, I honestly think that's a pretty great thing to do uh, that the company did. Instead of finding someone outside the company, they found someone on a member of the team already and allowed him to utilize his outside talents to help make an impact, not just for the company, but for children. So... Heck yeah. Do you, do you think yeah. that's something that they could have done better or that companies or any advice that you would have for companies that they can do better when it comes to acknowledging Black History Month? Um, I think it's important to get the communication out um, to acknowledge that they are celebrating it 
Um, I think they should do a little bit more than just put someone's name and say the history. Um, I think that that's really important. Um, but I'm thinking maybe. Oh, go ahead. Oh, never mind. It's a question for after. I was I was okay. about to say it, but then I was like, nope. He's already answering a small part of it. Um, you know, I think I think it's important to do that. I think, but I think that they could do more by by maybe having the supervisor or the lead of the department maybe engage more about it um, to bring more attention and instead of just having it on the back burner. Because I know a lot of companies, what they would usually do is, you know, they'll have some kind of feed or display just throughout the building or, you know, throughout the office, you know, highlighting certain people, their contributions, but their kind of background information. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think on that sense, they should, like the super, I think it comes down to supervisors or the department head to bring it more to the forefront. Um, maybe even have, maybe even have some questions to the, to the African-American staff to be like, do you want to lead something? Do you want to educate your coworkers? Do you want to share an experience? You know, anything like that. Um, and of course they can say no. But I think having that opportunity to share a story, share some heritage, or maybe even, you know, if it's a an office job, maybe have some kind of cultural, you know, food come in, you know, go down to a local restaurant um, that's African American owned, support them, feed the staff, um, you know, just little things like that to kind of and show more and invest yeah. a little bit back into it. Um, so that's my thoughts on something that they could do more. I like anything they should do less of. Um, less of not speaking about it at all. <laughs> I'm with it. Because <laughs> <laughs> there are those employees that are just like, all right, so here's what I need from you today. <laughs> like, you know, they don't yeah. say anything. They don't say anything about acknowledging Black History Month. They don't say anything about, you know, the contributions or what's going on. Um, I, you know, something that I, I think in general, even outside of Black History Month, I like when companies or at least team leads, or uh, but more so companies, when they speak on an injustice or something that's going on in the current event that impacts a certain community. I like when they address it, when they offer resources to talk about it, offer resources for comfort, for support, anything like that. Um, That's something that I don't think should just be for Black History Month. I think that's something that companies could do more of um, and less of just ignoring it. Mm-hmm. Um. So, yeah. Good question. Thank you. Yeah. Xavier, how about you? Same, same question. Anything they could that they should not do, or anything they could do a lot more of. I know you brought up the education, but if there's anything you have to add on to that, I'd love to hear it. And of course, what they shouldn't do. That's important too. Honestly, I think they should do a lot more of really just educating us on black history. And I mean, with you bringing up one of the African-Americans who was very knowledgeable to actually be able to learn with the uh, trains and everything, or actually be good with the trains, man. I mean, that's stuff we should know. I mean, and I really think they should do a lot less of just hiding of what Black History Month is, I mean, and just making us work. I think we should be more knowledgeable of everything that we, we've we accomplished in life as African Americans. I like it. Um, now, I'm going to keep mine short and sweet because I know I can often ramble and sometimes I sound like I'm complaining. Um, <laughs> I will start with what companies can definitely do more of, and that's 
I will say self-education for non-black employees. I mean, self-education for everyone in general. I want black people to know a lot about their history because, as we know, history can impact the present and the future. And knowing your history gives you a lot more knowledge. And knowledge, of course, is power. So yes, yes, being able to educate yourself on what our people have done and how we move forward is very helpful. Uh, Second, I would love for Black History Month to be acknowledged all month long, not just the first week. Usually a lot of companies would be like, celebrating Black History Month. We acknowledge the impact that African Americans have had on our community and stand by them. And then February 6th comes around and you've never heard of Black History Month. Like, it's the whole month. So yeah, it'll be nice that even if it's once a week, just to be you know, like honored with not the individual, but the community be honored with their impacts on either each person's industry or the philosophies and culture that is surrounding us now. Yeah. Uh, what? Let's see. What else could they do? I actually really like uh, Black Stripe Prism's idea of like going, feeding the people through local black business and like introducing them to more aspects of the culture. But also that definitely comes with education and self-education first. Um, yes. the, just because, and the thing that I want a lot of people to know, even through black history month is like, just because you are not a black person doesn't mean that the history didn't have a positive impact on you. And that goes for every person who's just like, well, there's no white history month. Yes. Because it's a part of your it's a part of American culture. It's a part of American history. It's a part of our education systems. The fact that I can tell somebody about Granville Woods and almost nobody knows who this man is, is exactly why Black History Month exists. Now, I shouldn't have to teach everybody why Black History Month exists, but that's also another reason of self-education. But, um, you know, you got to get rid of hate before you can have people desire self-education about things that don't actually include them. Yeah. Uh, Like I said, I didn't want to ramble. I'm trying not to, but uh, things that companies should not do, do not pass the mic just to make yourself feel gratified and to explain that don't give black people voices just to talk about how great the company has been to them. That's one of the most disrespectful things that you can do. That has nothing to do with black history. Yeah. They, that, that uses black people as props to make your company look better in the image of other black people. We, yeah. If you were doing the right thing, you wouldn't need that in the first place. Yeah. Um, once again, limiting it to just a couple of days out of the month. And also my thing, do this much less. Stop using that one same portion of the Martin Luther King I Have a Dream speech and thinking that you've really done something by quoting it. It's a Grammy Award winning speech. Almost yeah. everybody has heard it. But also, if you're going to read it, read it in full context and stop hiding behind like this supposed color blindness racism that people have. Of, I don't mm-hmm. see color like it, the the entire the speech in its entirety is way more touching and educational and powerful than that. It's literally to not be judged only based on your skin, but by the content of your character. That doesn't mean that you don't acknowledge race. That means you acknowledge Asian History Month. That means you acknowledge Native American Heritage Month. That means you acknowledge Black History Month. That means you acknowledge Hispanic, like Mexican History Month or Hispanic Heritage Month, my bad. Yeah. But it's like you acknowledge all these things, but you don't limit them to the boxes that stereotypes have put them in. And it's the most aggravating part about what people do, especially in parts of Black History Month, is dwindle it down to just black people needing something to be happy for. And it's like, no, it's actually yeah. to help educate you on how diversity builds communities, on how yeah. diversity builds culture, on how it built this country. So stop, stop thinking that you're going to pat yourself on the back for saying that you have black friends. Don't think that, you know, don't think that you need to include yourself on how many times you've watched Black Panther and now you all of a sudden think you understand black people. You don't. It's please don't don't do that shit. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Because you've seen you've seen Friday and you don't agree with the Rotten Tomatoes reviews. You're not. There's no cookout and you're not invited to it. If there was one, we just (laughs) allyship should look way different than what it does in the corporate setting. 
And if they are truly allies, then you wouldn't need to have black. You wouldn't have to pass the mic to black people to be like, so tell us how it is being black. You could educate yourself enough to say, this is the reason why this exists. These are the people, these are the situations of people we need to prop up. And we would defer to the actual black colleagues that we work with for everything else surrounding it. Yeah. I, I want to talk about Granville Woods. Does this feel, does this feel like it's pandering or is this something you actually want to know? I want to talk about, you know, um, who is my, one of my favorite people in history do like he made video, the first video game cartridge. And I'm trying to remember his name. Jerry Lawson. Yeah. Jerry Lawson. One of my favorite people in history. No matter if it's on topic or off topic, I like acknowledging that Jerry Lawson made like the first video game cartridge in 76. So it's like stuff like that is very interesting. And it's not just that real easy, tangible Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Like you're not really putting that much education into yourself. If you only know these three people your entire life, that Black History Month has existed. Yeah. But yeah. That's yes. my whole spiel on it before I go too far. <laughs> you do it, man. Elaborate, please. People need to know this. Yeah. You know? I, I would love for I would love for the world to just like we would all love for us to not have to have Black History Month, but Black History be a part of just a, American history in general. But we know that we have been excluded from many places and spaces. Yes. And literally the history books is one of them. And that's why it exists. But also nobody should dislike black people enough to where that has to be explained. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. uh, I don't know about y'all, but I don't have anything else to add. Y'all want to throw in some other things there? I'm trying not to rant too much. Oh, wait, I'm, I'm good on it, man. I understand a lot, you know, but everything you were talking about was the truth, you know? We, everybody needs to be more educated on black history than we are today, you know, because there's other black leaders out there besides Rosa Parks, uh, Malcolm X, and Martin Luther King. You know, we got a lot more out there that people need to know about. Exactly. BSP, you got anything? Um, yes. Um, I think everything starts with an open conversation I think if people really care to know about a culture then they should just straight up try to you know try to have those conversations ask about what you experience ask about your culture ask about how certain situations make you feel it I mean there's one thing to research to read you know, to indulge in a culture's food or, you know, events, parades, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's good, you know, it, at least having that open mind to want to explore different cultures. But I think if people truly want to understand each other, they should be open to those open dialects and conversations, you know, asking about the upbringing, asking about, you know, certain things that you celebrate, certain beliefs that you have, certain traditions, um, yeah. you know, certain, you know, people that you idolize, why do you idolize them? You know, yeah. if, if a tragic situation happens or something, you know, any kind of discrimination happens, having an open dialect and just, you know, hearing the other side and, and then going, well, how can I support? You know, right. What, what you know? What do you need from me? Um, and I, and I think it's very important. I mean, I don't think enough people take the time to talk and ask those questions. Um, and it's and it you know it spans not just for for Black History Month, but for anybody for any culture. You know, whether it's the Asian community you know, Hispanic community, African American community, you know, so on. Um, LGBT community even doesn't even have to be about race. Um yeah. 
it all starts with an open dialogue. How do certain things make you feel? How do you want to feel more supported? You know, tell me about your journey. Um, you know, just like how you would with a friend. Tell me yeah. about your history. Tell me how you, you know, experience this. You know, so I, I, I would encourage anyone to, if you have any sort of friend that maybe has a different um, background than you do anyway, then just conversate, take the extra step to know more about them, their culture, their their ideas, and to not to not hesitate or be discouraged by differences because we yeah. are all going to be different. You know, right. just be, just because you're the same ethnicity doesn't mean that you're the same person anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So. You know, have those conversations, not just with one friend, with another one, you know, different ethnicities, same ethnicities, whatever. Take the time to truly know what makes them tick, truly know how how they're doing, truly know how they celebrate their life, you know, what what made them into the person they are. Yeah. Have that conversation and learn understanding by trying to immerse yourself in someone else's perspective in history. Absolutely. And also have these conversations genuinely. If you don't care, just uh, stand out of the way of the people that do. Yeah. Like that's that's all I can suggest. Don't go into these situations and being like, oh wait, I have four black friends. I guess I gotta learn your whole life now because you know if not I'm racist. No, no. I no. mean you might you might be racist regardless <laughs> if you know their whole life. <laughs> but well, you know don't <laughs> Don't come into this situation thinking that, oh, it's Black History Month. I need to learn everything I can about every black person I know. No, if you if it feels like a task, don't worry about it. But yeah. be prepared for the critiques, the criticism, and the backlash that comes with not educating yourself on matters that don't immediately pertain to you. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else, folks? Nope. That was my my closing statement. (laughs) It was was a lovely one. It was. It was very good. Made sense. All right. Well, this has been another episode of the Shonen Speak Easy. Remember, it is not enough to not be racist. You must be anti-racism. Have a happy Black History Month. Love y'all.